findings have a whole different meaning on beads, baubles, and jewels. I'm here with Doreen Stevens from Fire Mountain Gems. And Doreen, I have been looking forward to this segment because you are going to show us how to find those amazing, great jewelry finds at antique places and flea markets and all sorts of places, right? This is, this is a fun, fun hobby. Okay. Where How do we get started? <laughs> okay. First, you need a little background information. You need to know where you're going to shop for these things. Mm -hmm. You're going to look in flea markets, yard sales, mm. uh, estate sales, raid grandma's jewelry box. Yeah. It's great. One of the first things you need to know is you don't want to, to uh, disturb something that, that could be an antique. You don't want mm -hmm. to refashion something. So I'm going to show you how to use a, a very basic tool, and this is called a jeweler's loop. And it has a little leather, uh, little leather pouch, so you can keep this in your purse, in your pocket, and uh, it's 10 power magnification. So what you're going to always want to do is before you really try to restyle anything or when you buy it, you're going to want to see whether it's authentic or not. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to use a loop. What you'll do is you'll open it naturally, and if you have glasses, you might want to take your glasses off. You're going to put the loop up to your eye, and then here, I'll show you how to examine something. You're going to bring the item into focal distance, and you're going to look all along the inside of it, and you're going to find where it might have a metal purity stamp. So you're looking for the markings on exactly. the inside. Exactly. Okay. Metal purity stamps are an indication that the, that the item that you're looking at is a precious metal. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to really mess anything up that, that might be a, a really good quality. On a bangle, since I have it out, on a bangle, you're going to look on the inside of the bangle, and you're going to look for either 14 karat. There's bunches of different metal purity stampings. One of them is 14 KT. This one's gold, so you might look for that. 18 mm -hmm. KT. There's bunches of them, and you can see them online. Another one that you're going to look for very common is sterling, and uh -huh. that will be 925. These are the European number designation. Okay. 925 or STER or sterling written out. Now, We're, all, um, for instance, sterling that is for sale, would it have some sort of market, uh, marking on it if it's of good quality? Mm, good question. To be sold as sterling, it should. Okay. Uh, most of the time, the only time you really won't see it is on a bead, and that's because sometimes uh, it'll, it'll interrupt with the, mm -hmm. the artistic value of the bead. Okay. So a lot of times you sense. won't see a bead stamped. On a ring, you're going to look on the inside of the ring shank. This is called the shank or the band. You're going to look on the inside, and they put it on the inside because you don't want to have it worn off right. with, you know, banging it on the table. Mm -hmm. On an ear stud, this is very hard to see, but you're actually going to look on, see the portion that goes through the ear? Right. You're going to look on that little ear stud, and that's really? why you, you need this you loop. You definitely I'm need not a loop kidding. <laughs> Unless you have really good eyesight. Yeah. <laughs> that's almost Superman eyes. Exactly. This, on the same place on this, you're going to look for the sterling silver. On a chain, it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of times when they're brand new, they'll have this quality tag, but they're very lightweight, they fall off sometimes. So if it doesn't have a quality tag, you're gonna look on this end that actually terminates the chain, or you're mm -hmm. gonna look on this clasp, and it'll clearly say sterling on it if, okay. it's, if it's sterling. On a bale, on a pendant, you're gonna look, I'm gonna flip this over, this is the front of the pendant. Okay. And you're gonna look on the back, and oh, on I the can back see you can there. see clearly 925, and that means it's sterling silver. Good. Something like this, you're not gonna want Those wanna... are definitely good tips to look for. Mm -hmm. Now what about cameos, they're just beautiful. They are wonderful. Uh, these we both found in the same jewelry box, and just an indication of a, of a true cameo is you're gonna wanna look at the intersection of the carving uh -huh. and of the background, and you're going to want to see whether it looks like it's one piece. You're also going to look for the, the natural color of the cameo shell, uh -huh. and this is, a great, this is a great example. Another thing you're going to look for is, uh, well, if you would hold it up to the light, they're slightly translucent because uh -huh. they're pretty thin. I'm going to turn it over, and another indication of a true cameo is that the, the back is curved because it's carved from a cameo shell. Uh, so okay. you're hardly ever going to find a straight back. This one also on the bar pin. Uh, it says sterling, and that's so another a place. There mm -hmm. too. Okay. This one, in contrast, is you can tell if you look at it very closely with your loop, you can tell that the foreground and the background are two different colors, like they were glued together. Yes. And you can yes. actually see a little bit of glue on it when okay. you look at it with the loop. So a difference in quality. Yeah. Also, when you turn it over, you can see there's no metal purity. You can see it's kind of funky. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, you know, the plating's coming off. It's still a beautiful piece you can play with, but it's not a, a right. genuine. Great. Those are some excellent tips. Now we have some other things that you're going to tell us about. This is sort of reconstructing some finds. Yeah. Okay. This is a fun thing to do, modernize these things. Sometimes you'll find pieces and uh, just things that, that uh, you wouldn't necessarily use as, mm -hmm. as what they were originally intended okay. for, brooches. and. So what I did was I went shopping, which is <laughs> a natural for me. And me he, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. Here I found an antique brooch, 
and I knew it was mother of pearl because I'm familiar with that shell. I took it and I knew it was some kind of oriental writing. I took it to the Chinese food restaurant uh -huh. and they told me that it was foo, which meant happiness. Happy, yeah. So I thought, wow, that's wonderful. It was right up my alley. So here I took uh, this, it's a specialized finding for buttons and mm -hmm. it has a, a contoured inside to where you can glue it on a button and it accommodates the hole. I'm going to turn this over. Also on this side, sorry, it has a two little loops mm -hmm. to where you can use it as a beading station. So I just, with my epoxy, I highly recommend epoxy because it's a real durable mm -hmm. hold. I just glued it on there and then I strung it with my favorite beads. Great. And then you put this one together. <laughs> this one was very, very neat. It was in actually great grandma's jewelry box and it was marked 333, which is eight carat gold. So all of these little Egyptian pieces were a broken bracelet and you really couldn't do anything with it. So what I did was I took gold wire, mm -hmm. gold chain, lapis faceted beads and turquoise and right. restyled it into a great necklace. That's gorgeous. And now let's take a look at these beautiful hairpins and brooches that you've put together. These are just fun. Nice They're fun there. and flashy. Here is a, this is a specialized finding mm -hmm. also, and it's a, it's a kind of a bobby pin with a flat pad on it. These are both brooches, so I just took the back off and glued them on there. Makes great, great little sparkles. And what about this one? This one's hysterical fun. This was <laughs> a, here, let me turn it over. This was a, oh, a clip. single clip-on, and yeah. so I just glued it on the front of this brooch, um, I'm sorry, hair clip, mm -hmm. and uh, had a real good. nice little, this is a hair stick. hair stick. Same thing. And this one's really good, too. These are fun. <laughs> this is a, a brooch converter and also a ribbon finding. Mm -hmm. And this you just put on the back of the brooch, and simply it, it converts it. It leaves the brooch intact. Good. This was also a sterling silver um, mm. brooch, made it into a bolo tie. Mm. This was a 20 cent item. It was kind of broken. <laughs> you just kind of put together. Yep. Well, Doreen, we are definitely doing some flea market shopping together. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm going to have to take you with me. Well, thanks so much. And that's My it pleasure. for today's show. Next time, we thought we'd look at a basic wire. There are so many things you can do with it, from stringing to wrapping to twisting. Join us for a few new ideas using wire on our next Beads, Baubles, and Jewels.